okay, the, the next one, uh, track seven is First Flight to Phoenix. Uh, this is my goofy, silly song, and this, uh, I guess, was also one of the ones that helped prompt this whole album. I was down in Phoenix visiting my uncle uh, last January, and he said, yeah, Christopher, I got a song for you, you got to write. This is uh, First Flight to Phoenix, about people that need to come down to Phoenix, you got to write that song. <laughs> What? He said, yeah, yeah, all them snowbirds, and you know, they just want to get out of there and come down to Phoenix where it's nice in, in the winter. And I said, well, all right, and that took us a challenge, and I wrote the chorus right there. Just like, okay, here it is, and we just played it and sang it, and he thought it was just you know, the best thing ever. And I haven't told him yet that I actually did this whole project, right. so he hasn't heard it yet. I'm going to show it to him in a week or two. Um, but yeah, he was one of the inspirations to make this whole thing happen. And this is every little cliche thing I could think of for Minnesotans, you know, like the long johns and ice fishing and things like that, and just getting away from it and going down to Phoenix. And thongs. And, and thongs, yes, yeah. gotta have that one in yeah. there. <laughs> now, I think this is funny, because you disliked this one intensely when you first heard it, right? <laughs> you, you played the demo for me, and I went, oh, it's going to be one of those kind of albums. <laughs> and I really didn't like it, and I thought that it was going to end up sounding way cheesy, but um, by the time all the music came together, I was like, this is exactly what the song is supposed to be, and it's super catchy, and actually the idea works. He's a genius. Listen to whatever else he tells you. <laughs> I like this guy. <laughs> yeah, and I think every album should have something a little more lighthearted, and this one certainly serves that purpose. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, this will be fun to play. I'm really excited to shoot the music video for this one, too. No thong. No thong? Probably not. Maybe I'll hold one up. We're not going to wear it though, that's for sure. All right, uh, track number eight, Luckiest Girl. This one's interesting for me. This one I wrote uh, three years ago or so after a breakup that I actually had had. And... She's it, the luckiest girl? She Well, that's what I wanted her to feel like at the time. Okay. <laughs> like, come on, let's, let's work this out so I can make you the luckiest girl in the world. And that was kind of the inspiration for the lyrics. Um, but I think that song has taken on more meaning since then. And I was talking with my sister a few days ago about it, actually, as we were kind of contemplating the music video for it. And she gave me a different interpretation of the song. More like, instead of trying to get back together, this song is about recognizing that I, kind of like, should have been you, I'm not, it's not good enough right now what we have going on. And I want you to know that we can go our separate ways, but I'm still going to be there for you. Hmm. And uh, so you can still go off and be the luckiest girl in the world doing your own thing, uh, but not necessarily together. And I, I like that in Serp too. I, that's one thing that's really nice about music is you can take these songs and however they speak to you in their own way. Yeah. yeah. So that's the last one that I wrote, just myself. Which leads us to number nine, which is maybe the coolest song in the whole album, surprisingly again. Like, you never know how these are going to shape up as we do them, right? <laughs> I, I was not expecting it to be what it would be, you know. So number nine is Country Rains. And this one... I wanted this kind of song, and I was working with uh, Darren Rust on this uh, while we were recording the other songs, and we started playing around with this kind of theme and the melody uh, this, and this vibe of the song, and originally I wanted it about this kind of girl who um, lives a 9 to 5 button down life, but then on the weekend she goes off and lives the country thing. But uh, Darren didn't like that idea, <laughs> he thought it was a little cliche, which is true, it's been done before. Uh, and so I think we came up with that name of Country Reigns, like this yeah, country is just fantastic and it reigns supreme, that sort of thing. And uh, he suggested, you know, maybe you should go out and uh, give this to, you know, work on somebody else with a song and see if we can come up with something. So I called you up and then we worked on moving on, but then I also said, alright, I also have this thing, uh, let's see what you do with it. And then I gave it to you. Yeah, and I think I remember I said, can I just take the title and run with it? And uh, just bring whatever I bring back and if you don't like it, you don't like it. Um, before we go on, I should have mentioned that your producer's name is Darren, and my name is Darren. Yeah. Um, you know, just might be a coincidence, but it might be those are the people you should work with that are named Darren. That's true. There could be yeah. something to that. Yeah. But Country Reigns, uh, I'm not a country boy. I grew up on a farm, but I'm not a country boy. And so this really had to, um, I got to actually put myself outside of who I am and, and try to act like um, I was someone who thought the country was the greatest thing ever. <laughs> that's the truth. So if you're listening to this and you're going, but that's my song. Well, it's still your song. It's okay. I had to study and understand what would make sense um, to, so that you would see the country is, is, the, is the greatest music in the world. <laughs> and the more that I, I started uh, digging this uh, concept with Country Reigns, the more I was thinking of the, the singer being like the king. And, uh, and, then it, and then it took a life of its own and all the, the lyrics line, lines pointed to that. And, and the power of the music 
the group that you have playing is uh, just fantastic. I remember Darren Russ saying, we have to do something with this song and make it good because the music is so good. <laughs> yeah, there it is. It's too good to not do something good with it. And I, I love the little lyric plays that you came up with in all these things. It's so cute, like the uh, round table, another round, or yeah. the uh, yeah. 300 horses under the hood. Like, all these lines are so creative. Yeah, you heard all the good ones, the creative ones. There were a lot of them that were tossed out. Uh, I remember getting laughed at a couple of times by Darren Russ, especially when it came to saying something about the Queen. I can't remember what it was. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. changed that line a lot. It yeah. worked, it got there. It worked. Yeah. She's the Queen, but yeah, there was something else about that. Yep. <clears throat> but uh, it was at, it was, that was probably uh, the reason why it was so fun is that we ended up writing this together in the studio, uh, rewriting it in the studio with Darren Rust, and uh, and just being able to uh, play around with it the whole time and recording the actual vocal lines and everything. Uh, that's probably what it, the one that makes me feel like I was part of the project more than anything else because that I makes sense. Yeah, you're actually there. Yeah, during it all. Yeah, yeah, it's a great time. Well, we gotta do that more often. <laughs> Track 10 is the next song. Uh, this is First Dance. This is one of the uh, earlier songs, or mid songs I wrote, I guess. I wrote kind of six of these right away, and then I had a few other thoughts and ideas that I never got around to uh, recording yet. So once I uh, had those first six down this summer, you and I got together again, mm -hmm. and this is one of the songs I showed you. And I don't think you really used much of any of my lyrics that I had <laughs> written out, <laughs> but the themes were all there, and so, uh, the, the whole first dance kind of thing, and I said, here's a rough melody idea, music idea, and a the theme, let's build some of this, and then you took it. Yeah. Well, actually, we did use some of your lyrics, so I know which ones they are. Good, And they're, right. they're the best ones. <laughs> if you've duh. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, but I was thinking when you first brought the idea to me, it's like, okay, you have a funeral song, and now you want a wedding song. And the drinking song, yeah, got that, that, got yeah. the whole thing covered. Yeah, that covers all of life, yes, I understand. <laughs> um, but the more that I, that I understood what you were going after, um, the more I thought it was, it was actually really sweet. And I can imagine a bride being on the floor and having her first dance and this being the, the, the song that she's listening to. And so then uh, um, just that idea that this is, uh, it's a precious song really. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, so writing the lyrics for that to me was just trying to capture that, kind of that feel of uh, the innocence of that first dance and now being here it is that it is replicated on the dance floor at a wedding. Um, uh, yeah, I just I, thought it was. I, I like love, love the imagery. I kind of imagine like um, when I when I shoot this music video, the couple on their first date at like a gazebo or something, dancing for their first first dance ever, and then the guy's reminiscing about the whole experience again as he's actually dancing with her for real at the wedding this time. I think it's really beautiful, and, and certainly the additions of my sister Tristan and Taylor Davis, the violin player, added a lot to it as well. Uh, I really wanted to involve my sister in this project somewhere, and uh, I thought this song would be perfect just to have a single female harmony line with it, kind of uh, reminiscent of the duet of the dance that's happening. And then Taylor has played with Home Free several times, she's a fantastic violin player, so thank you again Taylor, and it was great to have her on the project as well. Uh, yeah, I love this song, it's so cute. Yeah, this week. Out of all the songs on your CD, this is probably the one that I would play for my wife. Aww. Yeah. The rest of them, not at all. <laughs> well, this is the one that, when yeah, I listen to the words, those are those are the ones that I go, yeah, this could be my song. Aww. Yeah. <laughs> well, I like how that one Just goes, because yeah. of the lyrics you wrote, so. Right, yes, yeah. those, those few. <laughs> <laughs> all right, the last track of the album is track nine, Through These Eyes, and this is the very first song that I wrote that is currently on this album. Uh, this one was way back. I had a friend, uh, like 10 years ago now, who was going through a tough time. I uh, had a lot of uh, negative suicidal kind of thoughts. And I wrote her this song because I was trying to tell her that, um, you know, if you look at it from well, my viewpoint, it's way better. And I think you helped with these lyrics too. A lot of them were mine, but I think you did help a lot with these too. Yep. I do remember us sitting down to this. And, and for me, this song, I've always uh, recognized the influence of Michael W. Smith. Yeah, that's uh, one of my influences. Right, which, if you think about how long ago this was written, that would make sense <laughs> because that's uh, when, when Michael W. Smith was... I know you're still there, Michael. <laughs> uh, but that's when you were influential to a lot of people. Uh, but uh, this, I think, shows um, your music skills and your chord choices are not like everybody else's. And uh, to, that's what drew me to your writing style. And uh, yeah, so you. it was fun sitting down... Uh, Pulling this together, I don't remember when we did this or where it was. Yeah, Ten years ago. Yeah, I don't remember where it was yesterday. So, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it was the first collab I think we ever did on anything, which is yeah. nice. And I'm really glad that I could bring this song back. Uh, it was really fun reimagining it too with Darren Rust in the studio because he was here to get fresh. 
Uh, whereas I had you know, heard it a million times before with my old original demo of it 10 years ago. So he took it in a few different directions I really liked and yeah, this one turned out great too. I think it hopefully will be very meaningful for a lot of people out there. So yeah, that that is the album. That is Shine, all 11 tracks. Uh, thanks for listening, guys. Thanks for watching. Thank you, Darren, for uh, for uh, being involved in the projects. And thank you to everyone else who's involved. I hope you guys enjoyed this. And if you're interested for more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, support me on Patreon. Check me out on Facebook, Twitter, etc., etc. And hopefully you already have this album. But if you don't, you can buy it in the links below. All right, thank you very much, guys. Until next time. Bye.